Good afternoon. My name is Alex Keane and the title of this presentation is Off-Road Terrain Vehicles and Climate Change. The ISTVS is the International Society for Terrain Vehicle Systems. Terra Mechanics is the design of off-road vehicles and their interaction with the terrain they operate on and it is particularly concerned with off-road vehicle mobility and performance. Off-road vehicle categories include agriculture, forestry, military, planetary rovers, construction, mining, utility and leisure. The terrains involved include soil, clay, loam, sand, peat, grass, rough vegetation, snow, ice and desert, rough roads, boulder crawl, wading, water above hard, soft, smooth, rough surfaces, peatland, coastal terrain, and wetlands and planetary regolith. Some examples of off-road terrain vehicles and their terrain. Dryland arable agriculture, soft, wet clay paddy, forest transport, service recovery vehicles on snow and ice, desert, rough forest tracks, construction, boulder crawl, wading, mobility on hard, rough, wet surfaces. The main aim of this presentation is to identify and consider some aspects of the design and use of off-road terrain vehicles that link to parts of the solutions for the climate change problem the emissions of carbon into the atmosphere causing a man-made increase in global temperatures with associated severe weather events. Four general points of background context. Off-road vehicles generally use fossil fuels. With an increase in the availability of electric off-road vehicles, space for solar panels for battery charging is not usually a problem. Larger vehicles provide the option of green hydrogen fuel cell power units. Shown are an example of a recent battery powered tractor, an early 1959 example of a fuel cell tractor and a small two wheel tractor with its electric equivalent that can easily be converted into a transport vehicle. Secondly, off-road terrain vehicles interact with the surface they operate on, often changing its properties through surface damage or intentionally in, for example, agricultural operations. Operations on terrain may affect its carbon retention or emissions or the terrain productivity. Again, in, for example, agriculture, where uncontrolled traffic in fields has been shown to lead to the majority of the area of the field being travelled over by wheels in a crop production year, causing compaction and soil damage that reduce soil health and crop yields. In controlled traffic, farming wheel travel takes place in the same tracks. The repeated use of the same tracks leads to compacted high strength soil with a high coefficient of traction and a low rolling resistance. Overall, the soil structure and drainage improve. Carbon emissions from off-road terrain vehicles come mainly from transport and agricultural forestry and land use, ringed in green. Construction vehicles, as well as military and other off-road vehicles, will also make a contribution. Reliable numeric data is not easily available. Thirdly, most of the Earth's land is potentially accessible or accessed by off-road terrain vehicles, particularly in agriculture and forestry. Agricultural land accounts for around 38% of the Earth's surface, arable land being around 11%, and forestry accounts for about 30% of the land surface. Agriculture and forestry are important activities for increasing photosynthesis and carbon sequestration. Fourthly, in large parts of the world, 40 to 80% of the populations live in rural areas with a heavy reliance on off-road terrain vehicles for agriculture, food, materials and general transport. 
from 1950 to 2010, according to the International Labour Organization, agricultural labourers as a percentage of the workforce declined from 81 to 48 percent in developing countries and from 35 percent to 4 percent in developed ones. World population distribution. More than half the world's population lives in South Asia, where many countries have a very high level of rural population and a heavy reliance on small agricultural tractors. Europe and North America, with low levels of rural population, generally use much larger agricultural machines. The continent of Africa is where the largest increase in population is expected during this century. The development of off-road terrain vehicles can be heavily influenced by the region they're used in. The next two slides are used to provide a short analysis of the carbon fluxes between the Earth's surface and the atmosphere. The global carbon cycle shows that the largest uptake of carbon from the atmosphere is through photosynthesis which exceeds the loss of carbon through respiration by around three gigatons of carbon per year. Burning fossil fuels emits around eight gigatons of carbon per year, projected to rise to around 10 gigatons of carbon per year in the next few years. If we add up the uptake of carbon from the atmosphere on the right hand side of the table, and add up the emissions of carbon to the atmosphere on the left hand side of the table, the net emissions is 3.9 gigatons of carbon per year. This closely matches the carbon percentage increase in carbon dioxide parts per million over the last 10 years or so. This talk concentrates on two main considerations that relate to off-road terrain vehicles and climate change. Firstly, approaches to mitigating reducing carbon emissions. And secondly, dealing with the increase in disasters caused by increasing severe weather events. Disaster relief. There are so far three broad approaches to mitigating climate change greenhouse gas emissions. Firstly, switching to using renewable energy solar wind, hydroelectric, wave power, geothermal, hydrogen and biomass. Solar panels and wind power can easily be implemented on farms. A 100 kilowatt tractor requires around 300 400 square meters of solar panels, equivalent to a large barn roof. Green Hydrogen may have a role with large agricultural and forestry machines. Biofuels not from crops that compete with food crops but from algae may also play an important role in providing net zero hydrocarbon fuels for existing internal combustion engines and without using high value land for food production. Secondly, increase the efficiency in the use of renewable energy. Considerable effort has taken place in terra mechanics in measuring, modelling and predicting the tractive forces and efficiency of internal combustion engine driven agricultural machines and tractors. How will the change to electric power and drives affect the control and delivery of energy to soil engaging processes? There is scope for catch up research in these areas. More examples of increasing the efficiency in the use of renewable energy. Precision agriculture, automation and artificial intelligence. These often lead to smaller, more appropriately sized vehicles such as solar powered weeders. Individual plant monitoring and management. Tom, Dick and Harry are a trio of AI driven farm machines Tom digitally maps weeds and crop plants and then creates detailed per plant treatment plans. Dick and Harry handle fertilizing, weeding and seeding respectively, using less energy intensive chemicals and MBS, nature-based solutions. 
more soil health focus, less ploughing, more minimal cultivation and carbon storage and conservation. This is often referred to as regenerative agriculture. The third approach to mitigating, reducing carbon emissions where off-road terrain vehicles are used. Changing land use, promoting vegetation, forestry and agricultural activity to store, sequestrate carbon, increase photosynthesis to increase plant, tree and soil storage of carbon and avoid carbon losses through deforestation and other changes in land use. Promote peatland conservation and repair. Other environmental considerations now include biodiversity, the use of chemicals, food standards, food security, environmental considerations such as flood mitigation, reducing soil erosion and promoting wildlife are also uh, important. These are now included in the development of some national agricultural and forestry policy. Availability and use of water is becoming a major concern in many parts of the world. Water for agriculture, for food, drinking and domestic use, industrial use. Food production has a large influence on the design and use of off-road terrain vehicles and on soil carbon storage. Diet, population, food waste largely determine food demand and land use crops and animals, production methods and machinery energy use will affect the storage of soil carbon and soil carbon losses and are influenced by the prevailing social and economic conditions. Available land, climate and more significantly in recent years environmental considerations. Examples of developments in UK agriculture linked to concerns over climate change and the environment include regenerative agriculture, which has already been referred to, a holistic approach that restores soil health, uses less chemicals, more cover crops, intero cropping and agroforestry, and more conservation areas to promote biodiversity and wildlife and in particular pollinators such as bees. Paludiculture, the productive use of wet and re-wetted peatland, conserves the stored carbon in the peatland. This leads to the next big terrain issue, peatland. The importance of peatland is becoming more recognised. Peatlands only cover 3% of the world's land area, but they contain nearly 30% of all carbon stored in the land surface, around 540 gigatons of carbon, twice as much as carbon as all the world's forests. The peatlands of England contain more carbon than the forests of Europe, for example. Ecosystem services for society from peatland include carbon storage and sequestration in healthy peatland, reductions in downstream flood risk and siltation, reduction in wildfire risk on moorlands, improvements in water quality, biodiversity improvements and improvements in landscape quality and natural beauty. Peatland can be found in equatorial areas such as Indonesia and in Central Africa and the Amazon, but most peatland is found in the northern hemisphere in northern Europe, northern Asia and North America, Canada and Alaska. Large areas of peatland are frozen and as global temperatures rise, large stocks of peatland carbon are vulnerable to permafrost thaw, with in particular risks of large emissions of methane. 12% of UK land is peatland and around 80% of these peatland areas have been damaged and have lost carbon. Peatland can grow at around 1 mm depth per year in the UK and are potentially an important part of future carbon storage if repaired and conserved. 
the main part of peatland restoration consists of re-wetting using dams without further damaging the surface. Extra vehicle support may be required in this process. An important part of the surface protection is roadway support that allows the surface vegetation to grow through the roadway, providing further strength and reducing erosion risk. Some very low soil contact pressure vehicles, such as the BV206, do very little damage, but it is important to restrict vehicle access to unsuitable vehicles. Innovative roadways improve access and suitable very low ground pressure maintenance vehicles reduce damage. Terra Mechanics models the behaviour of terrain and this example physics based Terra Mechanics peak model is from Aarhus University in Denmark. Soil has a very important role in combating climate change. Mitigating climate change through carbon sequestration and improving agricultural yields are mutually supportive. Increasing soil organic matter increases soil carbon content and is one way to improve soil health and fertility. Calculations suggest this could be a significant level of carbon sequestration but may be difficult to achieve at a world level. Large primary cultivation machinery can reduce soil compaction and damage with low contact pressure running gear, including rubber tracks. This also leads to high tractive efficiency and overall energy efficiency. Plowing more associated with soil structure damage, carbon loss and high energy inputs is being replaced by many farmers with minimal cultivation where ploughing is not used. This brings me to the second consideration which relates to off-road terrain vehicles which I want to cover, disaster relief. How do we deal with the increasing effects of climate change caused by severe weather events and the increase in associated disaster relief? The harmful effects from severe weather events, storms, floods, heat, fires, landslides, often interrelated and producing cascading relationships between multiple hazards will require increasing support for disaster relief. The functional and mobility capabilities of off-road train vehicles, their deployment and fast train mapping and analysis will be an important part of this disaster relief. Recent examples of severe weather events include the Pakistan floods, mudslides in the North American west coast, Greek wildfires, and Cyclone Freddy damage in East Equatorial Africa. Suitable lightweight, low ground pressure amphibious vehicles are available. For example, the impressive high mobility BV206, which can be adapted to a range of roles in transporting people and carrying goods. Terra Mechanics support tools include terrain reconnaissance, in situ and remote terrain sensing. Further Terra Mechanics support tools include terrain mapping and analysis and route planning. Two examples of off-road terrain vehicle disaster research from ISTVS conference papers. Remote operations on dangerous sites after landslides and mudslides, work being carried out in Japan. And the Japanese National Research and Development Agency working on mobility and immobilization on mudslides, very soft muddy terrain.
There has long been concern about the effect of falling ash from an erupting Mount Fuji near Tokyo. This thermomechanics investigation by the Japanese National Defense Academy and the Mount Fuji Research Institute investigated the effect on vehicle performance of falling volcanic ash, the effect of depth and underlying surface geometry. As can be seen from the image, a quite sophisticated test area was developed for the experimental work on the effect of depth of ash and particle size. I still think the increasing rate of ice melt and sea rise is still to be fully recognised, including the effects on coastal erosion. As the surface darkens, the albedo effect takes place and more radiation is absorbed. The example image shows the East United States areas at risk to sea level rise. The Mississippi Delta is an area already being affected. Many remember the Hurricane Katrina 2005 New Orleans uh, flooding disaster. Of areas in eastern England at risk of coastal flooding, the area circled is particularly concerning as it is already damaged fen peatland. The top right image shows east coast erosion taking place. Uh, compared to the damage, the protection used often looks temporary. Concluding comments. A combination of a switch to the efficient use of renewable energy, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, carbon capture and storage using trees and soil organic matter is becoming a major part of the accepted approach to mitigating climate change. The biggest action to stop and reverse climate change is still to stop burning fossil fuels. Particularly for off-road terrain vehicles, the use of biofuels from algae may produce hydrocarbon fuels that have a net zero carbon emission value and can be combined with carbon storage. This may extend the lifetime use of already existing IC engines and also they do not compete for the use of high value farming land. Climate change solutions and disaster relief. Most of the off-road terrain vehicle solutions presented here, including disaster relief, require multidisciplinary input, systems analysis and systems thinking. And I leave you with the uh, last thought, is disaster relief now becoming an urgent expediency of climate change?